All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are going to do volatility today. Now, volatility uh, specifically deals with grabbing uh, volatile memory off of the system and being able to detect and, and sort of see what's going on with that volatile memory. When we're talking about volatile memory, we're talking about RAM. We're talking about uh, anything that when you power down a machine would disappear, right? Not uh, not what your typical Windows machine, right? So a lot of people think, oh, if I restart my machine, that's, that's gonna get rid of it. Well, are you doing a full shutdown, a full restart, which means the system's actually powering down all the way? Or are you just doing a light install or a light reset? And we see that sometimes with the newer Windows system where they don't really go all the way offline. And you'll notice that it does it because it maintains that memory, right? You can bring up the machine and those web pages are still there. However, if you power the machine completely off, it erases everything and then you can bring it back up the line, uh, then you won't see those web pages, right? So we're talking about volatile memory and being able to capture all that. So uh, first thing we're doing, we're gonna use that Windows 10 forensics box that we created before, uh, but we need to be able to transfer that volatile memory, right? So I'm gonna hit my settings. We're gonna go back into our USB and you can see that generic mass right there that we did before. That was the USB drive that we that we utilized to actually take a bit for bit copy. But I actually want to transfer something today. So I'm going to hit that plus button. I installed a new uh, USB drive. This one's got 64 gigabytes of space or something ridiculous like that. I'm going to throw that up in there and I'm going to press OK. And then before I forget, I'm going to do it with my Kali Forensics box as well. So I'm going to go settings and then USB and I'm going to add that. Now, here's the thing. I can't have my USB mounted to both boxes. So I need to boot up one and then shut it down and then boot up the other one and, and I'll be fine. But I want it available to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and press okay on that and then I'm gonna start this Windows 10 machine. On this machine is where we're gonna grab that volatile memory off of it so that we can use our Linux machine to actually investigate that volatile memory. So hold up while this boots up. Okay, so here you can see our old Windows system. We see that EO1 file that we grabbed off that USB before. Uh, if you didn't watch that video, it's one of my very first ones for this series. And I'm just gonna open up that FTK imager right off the bat. I'm also gonna double check to make sure that my USB is properly attached. Let me go in here uh, and we're gonna go down. And here you can see that USB D drive. And if I click on this, you can see there's nothing in there right now. Um, yeah, so it's good to go. All right, so we're gonna take a picture of our volatile memory, but in order to take a picture of it, we need to actually have some volatile memory. So I'm gonna open up some web pages. I'm gonna leave that one open. I think I'm gonna go to Yahoo. Go to Yahoo. Let's go to Amazon. There we go. And then, you know, I, I let's go to YouTube, right? So we'll hit YouTube a little bit. We'll hit YouTube. And then I'm actually going to play a video on YouTube while it's booting up. So I've got the normal homepage, I believe, for Bing. I have Yahoo up and going, Yahoo. And then I got Amazon. And then we're actually going to play a video with YouTube once it's up and going. Because I want some volatile memory, right? I want to be able to actually see something. I don't want to to do this scan or, or collect that data using volatility and then it doesn't actually do anything. Uh, that would be kind of a waste, right? So here we go with YouTube. It's giving me a little bit of an error. It's gonna pop up here in a second. Uh, the problem with my Windows 10 machine, honestly, is I think I only devoted like two cores to it and maybe a couple RAM. So it's probably a little bit lightweight. And then, yeah, so we'll see what happens. It may not pop up with the, with the sheer amount of locks of, of information there. And it looks like it's populating, that's good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start a video. It doesn't matter which one, we'll just use this one. Largest sphere lights up first time, stunning, yeah, great. Okay, obviously right after 4th of July, right? So we'll plot that play in the background. I'm gonna minimize that. All right, so how do we actually grab this data? That's the important part, okay? So we're gonna go through with volatility and actually grab this data and we're gonna do file, and then we're gonna capture memory right here. So I'm gonna let that capture that memory. So we're gonna name it in our destination uh, file name. I'm just gonna name that win win 10. I'm gonna include page file. I'm not gonna create 81. Uh, and then I need to destination path. I need to put that in there. I'm gonna make that USB right there. So it's under my USB D. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and capture the memory and let it go to town. Now this could take a while, depending on what's going on. Uh, assume that it's gonna take at least at least half an hour. So go get yourself a bite to eat and, uh, and we'll come back then. Okay, here we go and it's completed. So we can close that out. So I'm gonna double check and make sure it made it into the USB. And if I go into D, we can see that Win10 memory file as well as the page sys file, which I really don't need. 
Uh, and that's it. So we're done with that. I'm going to shut this down because I need it to not affect my Linux system. Let me shut that down. And then we're going to go into Linux. So I'm going to open up my Linux machine. Now I want to make sure the Win 10 disappeared. And you'll notice that you heard that pop, which means that it disconnected from the uh, Windows system off the USB. And then it kind of flashed up there and said, hey, I went back to your Windows 10, which is my normal operating system. So now we're gonna start up Kali and we should hear that pop again of that ding or whatever it is. And that's going to uh, connect the USB that we had on the Windows 10 system, which has the VMEM, or I should say the mem file, there was that pop uh, into our Kali box. So here we have Linux up and going and you'll notice that we don't have volatility here. So another program that I'm gonna have to start to download, not a big deal though. We're gonna go ahead and open up our Firefox, and then I have this handy dandy website right here. And I'll put this website in the description below so you don't have to go searching for it. But we're going to do this third one down. It's the Lindix standalone executables uh, volatility 2.6. Uh, a lot of people ask me why we don't use volatility 3.0, and the fact is it's not standalone, right? So they're still working on that one as far as I know. So we're going to do 2.6 standalone executable for Linux. Let me go ahead and start that sucker up. Now, I've had students in the past where they're telling me I have problems clicking on it. If you screw around with it enough, it'll eventually click and start downloading for you. You have to get it just right. It's it's literally right above the D of up here. I don't know why they made it so difficult, but it is what it is. Uh, so yeah, so get it downloaded. Once it's downloaded, you can see that here that it is. I'm gonna close that out. I'm gonna open up my folder right here, and you can see that under downloads, I've got that volatility uh, file right there. I'm just going to right click on that and I'm going to extract here. Okay, so now that I've got it extracted, you can see volatility right there, but I don't want it there. I'm actually going to put it into a different folder uh, and do this. You can do it two ways. You can right click on here somewhere and create a new folder, I believe. Yeah, create folder and just name it whatever you want. Or you can go into terminal like I did because I did this for a different class and all I did was do ls and see it's right there. You can do mkdir, which stands for make directory, and then files just like so, and create the directory just like that. Uh, either way works fine, but it's in there already. And then I'm gonna be cheap. I could use the move command in terminal, but I'm going to cheat, and I'm just gonna drag it over there. Yeah, that's me, I'm cheap. I don't mind saying it, it doesn't bother me. All right, so the next thing I need to do is I'm actually gonna rename this, and again, I could use terminal to rename it, but I am actually going to just cheat again and call it volatility. Okay, and again, I know the Linux uh, enthusiasts are gonna be up in arms over this, but I, I just don't care. All right, so I've got volatility right there. I'm gonna open that up. Now you see where it says right here, volatility underscore 2.6. That's the actual volatility uh, program that you're gonna be running, but you don't wanna type all this out, trust me. So again, we're gonna right click and we're just gonna rename it. And I'm just gonna rename it literally vol. So let me erase all of this. Let me get rid of all this. Work with me here. Let me get rid of all this, and I'm just gonna name it Vol, just like that, just to make my life simpler. And you'll know what I'm talking about when we get through this, right? So I'm gonna rename it. It's good to go. I'm done with that portion of it. So we're ready to move on. We have a working copy of Volatility, and you can see here that I've got my 62 gigabyte volume. If I open up my folder again, you can see down here that I've got my Windows 10. Now you can drag this over to your hard drive if you want, my file is about nine gigs, and to be honest, I'm, I'm just looking at it going, I don't wanna spend half an hour dragging that over my hard drive when I can just read it off the USB. And I'll show you how to do that here in a second, okay? Um, so we're gonna open up Terminal. So we gotta get into that volatility folder now. So I'm gonna do CD files, and no such directory exists because I didn't capitalize it. So CD files, do an LS, we have that volatility. I'm gonna do CD vol, hit tab, there I'm in volatility, and now you can see that I've got that vol right there. So in order to run it, I'm gonna do period forward slash vol, and then I'm gonna do a switch H for the help menu. So it gives me all those great commands. If I really wanted to know more about it, I could, and I can go through, and you can see here, look, dump addressable memory to the process. We can see all kinds of different commands in there, uh, depending on what we're trying to do, okay? But now I need to find my USB. So I'm gonna split this screen do it horizontally, just like that. Let me blow this up a little bit more. And I need to find, I need to find my uh, my USB. And I'm pretty sure it's under media. So I'm gonna do 
CD, I believe it's media, media Cali, just like that. No such barrel directory. Let's put a forward slash in front of that. There we go. Let's do an LS. And you can see that 94C. Pretty sure that's my USB. So we'll do a CD9. Hit that tab button. Do an LS. And there we go. There's that Windows 10 mem. So I'm going to do a PWD for present working directory. And it tells me I'm under that right there. So I'm going to grab all of that. So Media Cali. Da -da -da. Let me go back up to this other menu. Let me blow this up back up. Now we're going to do a period forward slash vol. That's going to type in and say, hey, we want to run the volatility program. And then I'm going to do a switch F for the file that I want to run it against. Uh, and then I need to put that in there, right? So I can do control shift V or I can do a right click. I'm going to do control shift V. There's that media right there. Now it's not all the way there, right? Because I have that actually USB image, right? Which we called Windows 10 right there. So capitalize Windows 10 dot mem all right and then i need to tell it what i want to do so what i'm saying is run volatility here's the file that i want you to run all that information and then i got to tell it what i want well i want image info and if you scroll up a little bit you can find out exactly what image info does and i'm going to scroll up it's alphabetized which is nice image info identify the information for the image okay so that's what we're going to do first let me back up over here da -da -da. Scroll all the way down on this top window, da da da, and I'm just gonna hit enter. The same time that's running, I'm done with this bottom screen. I'm gonna collapse this. So I'm gonna say collapse subterminal. That'll get that up there for me, and let me blow this back up for you so you can see it. Because at this point, I'm just gonna hit the up arrow for any other commands. Now, it's going to to read that that file, that memory file. There's nine gigs. At least for my system, it was nine gigs of volatile memory. So it's going through quite a bit of information as it goes through. Okay, so give it some time. It's not a fast program when it's reading such a big file. Uh, be aware of that. Now, with that said, if you didn't provide yourself with a with a uh, FTK image, right, and you're like, hey, I'd love to do this, but I don't, I don't have an image info, or I don't have this, or I don't have a USB, or whatnot. Not to worry. I'm going to show you where to find one. I use this one in class quite a bit. It's called Crydex. Now I'll put this link again in the uh, in the comments below, so you'll have this one. And if I go over here to Memory Samples under GitHub, you can go a little bit down and you can see malware Crydex, and it's an image file. If you click on that one right there, uh, you can actually download the information. Uh, potential security risk. I love that, right? So I'm going to allow download, and it's going to go ahead and start downloading. Uh, but that Crydex is a piece of malware that we can actually um, examine inside this system, right? And it's off of Windows XP, yada, yada, yada. But it's a good, it's a good learning tool if you want it. Um, and I'll post my Google Drive as well because I'm pretty sure I have it on my Google Drive. So you can grab it from either one of these locations if you want to. I believe the one for Crydex is actually a zip. So you have to go in there and unzip it. The one that I'm going to post in my Google Drive is already unzipped. Um, and I know that some students, if they've got issues or um, I've talked to some people where they're, they, they don't have the ability to unzip for whatever reason, that allows you to do it. Now, Linux, it comes in there automatically. So there's really no reason for it. But I see that a lot of time in Mac or Windows. Um, but anyway, make it easier on you. Not a big deal. And you're going to go through the same thing, right? You'll download it. We're going to put it in the right folder, uh, so on and so forth. And I'm going to actually show you how to do that since we're waiting on this to happen, right? So I'll go back into my folder. I'm gonna open up my terminal. I'm gonna to go to downloads. There's that Crydex mem dump right there. I'm just gonna right click, extract here. It's gonna to start to extract it here in a second. There's that Crydex mem dump. Obviously I've done this before because it's number two now, right? And then I can do whatever I want with this. I would actually put this in my files. So I would open up a new, and that way I don't have to go tracing it around in my, in my other place, right? And I can just put it in my files and I can literally move that Crydex dot, vmem right here i'm going to move that right here okay and then i actually want it to go in the volatility folder because i want it to be in the same as my pi so my volatility right there okay and so i've got my crydax vmem and i've got my volatility right there okay and i'll show you what i mean right so this is going pretty slow let me open up a new terminal let's go through this and i'll show you what i'm talking about and how quick crydax actually is to actually look at right so we'll do that cd files Right, we're gonna do the ls, there's volatility, so cd volatility, ls again, uh, and then there's our volatility, so vol, 
and then switch app just like before. We got to provide that name. I'm going to do Crydax. Uh, it's going to say, hey, you didn't provide enough. So Crydax and then image info, just like so. And I want you to see how much quicker this one is than the other one. Uh, again, it's going to take you a little bit, but it's not going to take near as much time because that Crydax file is not big at all. Um, the FTK that I did on my Windows 10 system, that was pretty big, right? And you can see that I'm already pushing out information on that Crydex, okay? So that's something you can do. Let's go back to this other one. Let's see how far we are, because I want to kind of finish this up. Uh, but you could go through this, right? So let, let's use Crydex just because it's going quicker today. And I want to kind of get through this lab. I've got students that are waiting for this lab for me to finish up so they can figure out how to do it, okay? So we've got all this information right here. Um, we did an image info. You see me looking off the side. Let's do Timeliner, right? So we're just gonna press the up arrow. Instead of image info, we can do Timeliner, just like that, and hit enter, and it'll start running the timeline. Uh, and this is the great part, right? This Crydex info, it's so lightweight that you can go through these commands pretty quickly. Um, but anyway, go through this, Timeliner, it's gonna show a complete timeline. Look at these date timestamps, all the way from it's born, and it shows you all this great information that you could utilize for that kind of stuff, okay? Uh, and if you want to interrupt it for whatever reason, I don't know why you would. You could press Control C like this. Oh, nope, it's not going to let me do it. I thought it would, but it's not. Let's try it again. There it goes. It, it did it the second time. Apparently, I just wasn't in there, right? And if I really want to know what I was doing, I could literally type vol and then switch H to get all the different commands that I wanted to run against this little thing, right? So I could do PS list for stall running processes, PS scan, process scanner for process object. I mean, this tool is just so great when it comes to that. Memory map, print the memory map. You can do a memory dump. You can do all kinds of things with this, uh, with this program. It's, it's absolutely awesome uh, when it comes to it, right? And you can even print Windows Desktop, i.e. the verbose details. You can do the wind tree. I mean, it's just, it's just freaking awesome. I love volatility when it's running properly, all right? Let's go back over here and you can see when it's going through something that's nine gigabytes in length, it's gonna take some time, all right? Uh, that's volatility. We're gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on this a little bit later on my own. Um, I gotta figure out how to get these images a little bit smaller for my students. But for Crydex, you can kind of see what we're doing, all right? You can see how this works uh, and go through there, all right? I hope that was helpful. I hope you learned volatility. I hope you learned how to install it. Uh, if you did, if you found this video helpful, please, 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 like, subscribe, and hit that little alert button. I will be doing more of these little labs and tools as we go forward. Thank you very much. Have a great one.